All right, 1 Kings chapter 3, and uh, we're continuing our, our study, uh, answering the question, how to know the voice of God, or how to hear the voice of God. At the beginning of the reign of this king, Solomon, God spoke to Solomon and says, what do you want? What do you want me to give you? We see that in verse number 5. Ask what I shall give thee. What a statement. Uh, could God trust us with such a statement? What do you want? I'll give it to you. You name it. Here it is. And uh, there was such trust that God had in Solomon. He could ask that question uh, knowing uh, Solomon's heart. And so as a young man, probably in his early 20s, Solomon recounted, and we read the verses, how kind God had been to his father, uh, his loving kindness, but also how kind that he had been to his, his self, his son of, the son of David, Solomon, uh, in allowing him to fill the, the throne room, uh, the stead there of his dad uh, in the king. But notice what he says in verse number 7, recognizing his inexperience and his need for wisdom. He says, I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. And so we see something very quickly aware about this individual. Here's a young man in his early 20s, but yet he says, I'm not just a young man. He says, I'm not just a child. He says, I'm a little child. He says, and this responsibility, this task that you've given to me is well beyond uh, my years of experience, and I need some help. I need some guidance. I need some direction. And if we all can keep that type of mindset of saying, God, I'm but, I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care how old we are tonight. And say, God, I'm but a, just a little child. And I need help and guidance and direction. And then whatever areas of our life. And, and then notice what he asked for in verse number 9. Uh, God says, what do you want? I'll give it to you. And here's his answer in verse number 9. Then he asked for what? An understanding heart. An understanding heart. Uh, if you look that word, uh, it's interpreted uh, in our um, Bible here as a hearing heart, as a hearing heart, a heart that hears the voice of God. He asked for a request, and the next verse goes on and says, God is very pleased with his petition, with his response. And he says, you didn't ask for wealth. You didn't ask for fame and fortune and popularity and, and stuff and material stuff. You didn't ask. All you asked for was an understanding or a hearing heart. Because isn't that what wisdom is? Wisdom is being able to have the mind of Christ or the mind of God and be able to hear the voice of God and know what God would do in, in and every given situation that we might find ourselves in. And so why did he ask for an understanding or a hearing heart, a heart that hears the voice of God? Uh, well, it tells us he wanted to judge the people properly and make right decisions, discern properly, and uh, help the people be all that God would have them to be. You see, there's nothing more important for you and I as a Christian than to be able to hear the voice of God. And I, 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 I'm concerned that so few of God's people truly know how to hear the voice of God. And, and God, it, it amazes me how much God speaks about the importance of hearing God. In Luke chapter 8, I'm going to go real quickly as we introduction here. Uh, you can write the verses down. You can, if you can keep up, that's fine. But Luke 8, 18 says, Take heed, therefore, how you hear. Take heed, therefore, how you hear. You better be careful how you hear. You better make sure you're hearing the right things, the voice of God. Uh, in um, uh, the phrase we see throughout Scripture, ears to hear, it's used all throughout the Bible. We see it first mentioned in Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 5, uh, verse 4, I'm sorry, when Moses was rebuked of the rebellious Israelites, and he says, Yet the Lord hath not given you a heart to perceive and eyes to see and ears to hear unto this day. And so Moses was rebuking these people, not because they could not hear physically, they were very well able to hear physically and see physically, uh, but God was talking through Moses, you're not able to spiritually hear the voice of God. Uh, you're not able to spiritually see and, and, and perceive uh, the things of God. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 21 says, hear now this, emphasis there on hear, hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. Ezekiel chapter 12 and verse 2, Son of man, thou dwellest in the midst of a rebellious house, which have eyes to see and see not, they have ears to hear and hear not, for they are rebellious house. And so all through the Bible we see the repetition of God saying, you've got eyes, 
but you're not seeing. You got ears, but you're not hearing the voice of God. You're not seeing God at work in your life. When Jesus was transfigured on the mountain, the Father spoke from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear, hear ye him. Jesus explained to some uh, that refused to hear in Matthew chapter 13, verses 15 and 16. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing. Their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears for they hear. Time and time again we see that phrase uh, where the Bible says, he that ears to hear let him hear. You see Jesus presented truth with a take or leave it response. I'm going to give it to you either hear it or you don't. Either believe it or you don't. Either apply it or you don't. Either obey it or you don't. I'm not going to argue about it. I'm not going to debate it. Here it is. Hear it or don't. And it was always a take or leave basis. Anyone who has a child knows it's possible for audible words to be ignored and simply just not heard. Why is it they can hear uh, the, the slight whispers of uh, put the ice cream away before the kids come out or put the cookies away and they hear that but when you're trying to get them to clean their room, to do right, get along with each other, I didn't hear yet. And uh, they ignore that ears to hear. But they did not hear. Jesus explained that as a child of God, within the family of God, it consists of those who listen to the Father. John 8, 47, He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because you're not of God. And uh, on many occasions, he told his disciples, let these sayings sink down in your ears. In Luke chapter 9, verse 44, he said, I don't want you just to hear it. I want you to hear it uh, from the spiritual perspective. I want you to hear the voice of God. Do you know the voice of God? Do you hear the voice of God? All the voices are out there. Can you, dis can you distinguish between which is the voice of God? Uh, Jesus explained uh, that uh, we've got to hear God. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. John 18, 37, everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Thousands were impacted by Jesus' earthly ministry, but only a handful, only a handful had ears to hear. Uh, and uh, really listen to what the Savior said, even amongst his own crowd, uh, the apostles. Uh, have I not told you before? And uh, have I not taught you this before? Have you not heard what I've told you? They heard all that he said, but they didn't hear. And, uh, and that's what we're talking about, hearing the voice of God. Paul warned Timothy that some people will turn away their ears uh, from the truth. Second Timothy chapter 4 and verses 2 through 4. Preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts, they shall heat them themselves teachers, having itching ears. They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. God says the day is coming. The last days are coming when their ears, they want them to be tickled. Tell us what we want to hear. Show us what we want to see. Their, their ears will be turned away. And God says they'll be turned to what? To fables, to, to falsehood, to lies. Seven times in Revelation to the letters of the seven churches of Asia Minor. Christ says he that the ear, let him Hear what the Spirit saith on the churches. In Revelation chapter 13, verse 9, immediately following the description of the Antichrist, we read, If any man have an ear, let him hear. And so the Bible places a great premium on the importance of hearing the voice of God. Hearing the voice of God. Do you know the voice of God? Do you hear it? Do you know it? Do we respond and know the voice of God? The great commandment from God through Moses again began with the words, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Proverbs 8.34 says, Blessed is a man that heareth me. Remember, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We cannot neglect. That's why the devil is going to do everything he can to cause us not to hear the voice of God. We'll hear a lot of noise, a lot of stuff. But do you hear the voice of God? And so that's what God desires of us tonight. You say, but preacher, why? Why is it so important that we hear the voice of God? Because as a Christian that wants to please God, I'm dependent upon God to guide me. 
I cannot live the Christian life myself. I need the guidance of God. I need the direction of God. But to, he, but to know the guidance of the, of the guide, I must be able to hear the instructions that's given by the guide. So as a Christian tonight, you want to walk with God. You want God to guide your life and to direct your path and to lead you in the right direction. But you won't be a good follower of the guide. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Why? Because they can hear the guide to know the direction to follow because they know the voice of God. And so we see the importance of this over and over again. Uh, uh, Jesus himself, it was vital for him to hear the voice of the Father. Uh, let me give you a couple of verses here. Go to the Gospel of John, chapter number 5. Then we'll jump over also to John, chapter 8. Jesus did not do anything unless he saw the Father doing it. And he did not say anything unless he heard the Father saying it. This is Jesus, vital for him to hear the voice of God. Look in John, chapter 5, verse 30. Jesus speaks, said, I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. He said, listen, I don't do anything of myself. I don't do anything that I want to do. I only do what I hear of the Father. Look in John chapter 8 in verse number 26. John chapter 8 in verse 26. I have many things he goes on to say, to say and to judge of you. But he that sent me is true and I speak. I speak to the world those things which I have what? Heard of him. So our Savior in his earthly ministry, he spoke what he heard from the Father. He did what he saw the Father and in Jesus needed to follow and know the voice of God, the Father. How much more should we know the voice of God? If Jesus didn't do his ministry apart from knowing and hearing and responding to the Father's voice, then I think it's pretty important that we also should know the importance of the Father's voice. You see, when humanity disobeys God, we didn't just break a rule uh, there. Uh, we broke a relationship. And with the broken relationship there in the Garden of Eden, we lost our ability to hear God. Uh, that's why the Bible says a natural man understands not the things of God. What? He can't hear the things of God because it's, 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 it's different to him. It's, it's, he's blinded to it. He can't hear it. But once you accept Christ your Savior, Holy Spirit of God wants to rekindle and rebuild and retune and grow that hearing ear to hear the voice of God. And, and we're going to see how to do that. And so tonight, uh, let's look at some things tonight of how uh, can we know the voice of God. How can we hear uh, the voice of God. I, I, these are all, I, I tried to put them in some order, but there are just so many different points. We'll just have to hit them and go. Number one, uh, we got to believe that God speaks. We got to believe that God speaks. Most people cannot hear the voice of God because they don't truly believe that God ever speaks to them. You know what? Uh, if you don't think God's speaking, you're not going to be listening. And uh, you're not going to be aware of the voice of God. So in order to hear God and know the voice of God, you've got to recognize that God does uh, speak uh, to you. Maybe they believe they have a lack of ability. Maybe they don't think that God would speak to them because they feel unqualified. But if a person, uh, if a, if a person does not believe that God speaks, then they're going to ignore what God could be clearly speaking to them and just say, well, it's just sort of bad luck, or well, it's just sort of fate, uh, or well, that's just sort of how the cookie crumbles, or that's just how the, the dice is drawn. Listen, God speaks, and you've got to be aware of the voice of God because He's trying to speak to you. Why? He needs to guide us, direct us, instruct us, help us, give direction in our lives. But if I'm not listening or knowing His voice, I'm not I'm gonna miss it. And so I've got to expect to hear the voice of God. Uh, radio and television stations, they transmit 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but you'll only hear them when you turn the receiver on and tune in. Uh, at any time you turn the station on, there it is. Uh, but you gotta turn it on. You gotta get the receiver to uh, connect in. And uh, uh, listen, you've gotta do that same thing. Failure to hear the signal doesn't mean the station isn't transmitting. And your failure to hear the voice of God doesn't mean that God is not trying to get your attention and trying to help you and direct you. The problem is not in the voice. It's in the transmitter trying to receive, uh, the receiver, I'm sorry, trying to receive the voice of God so you can hear it. God is constantly transmitting his voice to his sheep. But few of us are tuned on, turned on, or tuned in. 
Most Christians are so often so busy pleading with God in prayer to transmit when the problem is with their receivers. The first thing you've got to do is fix the receiver, which is to believe that God is already speaking to you. You just need to start listening. You got to tune in and uh, let God uh, do what he does. And that takes time. It takes effort. It takes focus. So I said, number one, how do you hear the voice of God? We well, got to believe that God is trying to get your attention, that God's trying to help you, that God's trying to direct you. God says, he that hath ears to hear, hear. God, would you give me an understanding heart, a heart that hears God, the voice of God, so I can lead the people. I can lead my family. I can live my life in a way that pleases God. Because I can hear the voice of God. Number two, I've got to respond when God speaks. Responding when God speaks. It's important to remember that listening to God begins with a genuine desire to hear from Him in order to obey Him. It's not just hearing from God just because you want to feel spiritual because I heard from God. You hear from God because you want to hear what God wants you to do uh, and obeying the words of God. Uh, James 1 22 says, Be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. Do you read the Bible today, daily, just to meet an obligation with yourself, uh, to meet the daily uh, grind of reading your Bible? Do you skim over a few verses without really considering what you've read? Or do you read the scriptures with a hungering heart to hear the voice of God, with a desire to obey the things of God? Or you skim through it and you say, I don't get anything on my Bible. The Bible is the mouthpiece, the voice of God. He's trying to talk to us. He's trying to direct us. He's trying to guide us. But if you're not listening with the intent to obey, to apply what you've read or what you've heard, then you're not going to hear the voice of God. You've got to be ready to do that. I've never heard God's voice in the way I hear people speaking around me. And that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about God doesn't do that. God uh, doesn't speak to us the way we would speak to one another. But I know how God speaks to me. I can hear God's voice in my life. Not an audible voice of go down this road or turn left here, go this direction, whatever else. Hearing God's voice is, isn't a loud voice speaking to me. Rather, it's God's voice and that internal promptings to the good that becomes easier and easier for me to hear as I'm more faithful in doing and responding and obeying the things of God. The more I respond to what I hear of God, then the more sensitive I become to hearing the voice of God so that I can respond the next time and obey the next time. And the more you respond in obedience to God, the more sensitive you become to hearing the voice of God. The more you go in not responding to what you've heard, the less sensitive you become to hearing the voice of God. It doesn't mean God's not speaking. It means you're not able to hear because if you did hear it, God knows you're not going to do it anyway. You have eyes to see, but you're not seeing nothing. You have ears to hear, but you're not choosing to hear as a result of that. And so God will reveal himself to those who seek him humbly. We have the power to hear God's voice more clearly when we truly and readily receive what God is saying to us. It's not just about, I heard from God. I heard the voice of God. You hear to do. If you're just hearing for the sake of hearing, then you're missing the purpose of hearing because God said, I want to direct your life. What does Solomon say? I'm but a little child. I mean, here's a man that's on the throne. Here's a man who's young, young, 20 years old, and he says, God, I need a hearing heart. I need to hear the voice of God. I've got a lot of people depend upon me. I've got a family I'm trying to lead. I've got a business I'm trying to build. I've got a life I'm trying to live to please you, God. Would you please give me an understanding, a hearing heart? I've got to hear the voice of God. I've got to know when God speaks, I've got to know his voice. The most important thing that you can have as a leader in your home is knowing the voice of God, the greatest security you can give your family is knowing that they know that they know that you know how to hear the voice of God. Uh, our actions often betray our intentions. Sometimes our choices follow our own desires rather than God's desires. We have many choices to make each and every day. If we don't listen actively of the Lord at each stage of our life, we can go in a different direction. And it may seem so innocent at once, uh, at first. And it may seem so not a big deal at first. But one degree off and uh, over a course of months and years of your life, that one degree of off course will lead you down to heartache and disappointment and shipwreck of life. All because you did not know how to hear the voice of God. And it was just a little movement off course. But the direction is going is a direction that will not end up where God intended for it to end up. If we don't listen actively, 
then we're not going to be sensitive to hear the voice of God. John 7, 17. You're still in John, right? Go to God, John, Gospel of John chapter 7 and verse number 17. John 7, 17 says, If a man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether, no sound, I speak of myself. God says, I'm speaking to you. Do you hear me? But God says, you're not going to hear me unless you're doing my will. He says, if a man does the will of God, he'll know the doctrine. Well, show me why I should do this. God says, I don't teach you how to understand it before you do it. I want you to do it because it's the right thing to do. And in the doing of right, you'll begin to understand why you do it. But if you're waiting to understand why you're supposed to do right before you do right, you'll never understand right because it comes after the doing. That's what the Bible says. If a man will do his will, he'll know. He'll understand. And God says, then I'm going to be able to speak to him. And uh, I'm gonna, they're going to be able to hear me uh, because I know they're listening for me to speak, listening for me to speak to them. But they're also listening with the intention to do, to obey, to receive and to apply in their life. You see, when God speaks, he clearly reveals his will. And if a person does not respond in obedience, the relationship is hindered and the communication cannot go forward because there's so much counterfeit voices that give us false guidance and wrong directions. We must determine to always respond uh, in obedience to God. When God says that, we've got to respond. Why? I don't want to miss out on the voice of God. I don't want to become the voice where it becomes dull and distant. I want to be in tune, sense of the voice of God. But it only comes as I do. What God revealed to me and says, God sp speaks to our hearts. And God says the only response is obedient response. Take your Bibles, go to 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. We're talking about how to hear the voice of God. Number one, I got to know that God speaks to me. God speaks to you. As a child of God, my children, he says, I'm going to talk to you. My kids hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. I'm looking for a child of God. And every child of God is to hear the voice of God. And when you hear, you hear with the intent to obey, to follow. Look in um, uh, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse number five. So there's, there's so many counterfeit voices out there giving us a wrong direction and wrong guidance and, and false guidance. So we've got to determine to always respond to obedience to God's voice. Second Corinthians 10, 5. Casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. That's all the voices that are out there trying to usurp the authority of God, the understanding of God, the knowledge of God, the truth of God. And they're trying to bog you down, get you confused. There's so many voices. Which way do I supposed to go if God would just come down and tell me what to do? I do it. But there's just so many voices. I don't know what to do. And God says in this verse here, he said, you got to cast down those imaginations, all those voices, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, all those voices trying to get your legion and guide you and bring what? Into captivity. Every thought to what? The obedience of Christ. If you want to hear the voice of God, then you've got to be obeying what voice of God you do hear. If you're not obeying the obvious voice of God, you say, well, I know God wants me to do that. Then why aren't you doing it? It's within your best interest to do what you know you're hearing God tell you to do. And the longer you put off not doing what you know God's told you, and you're hearing God, then you're becoming, you're hurting yourself. You're becoming desensitized to other things that you're going to come up against in your life where you're going to need to make some decisions. You're going to say, God, what would you have me to do? And you're not going to hear the voice of God. So it's going to be what we talked about last week. Let's put out the fleece. And uh, let's flip a coin, three out of five. And uh, let, let's, uh, uh, you know, any man, my mole, and let's open the Bible anywhere and, and come down here. And, and we're going to go all the direction we learned last week, how not to hear from God, because we're so desperate to hear uh, from God. So God says you bring all those other voices under the control of what? The thought of the obedience of Christ. We must be very cautious about what we hear. We must be very cautious about how we hear. And we must be very cautious about who we hear it from making sure we carefully evaluate it, ever looking to the Word of God, which is always the final authority to confirm if what we're hearing is in tune, in harmony, and in line with the Word of God. If it's not, then those voices I'm hearing is false direction, false movement, false uh, direction for my life. The more one ignores and disobeys the voice of God, the duller one's spiritual hearing becomes. The duller one spiritual being comes. So you say, I, I know I should do this. You better do it because you're going to need to hear the voice of God about this situation as a parent. 
You need to hear the voice of God in this situation as a spouse. You need to hear the voice of God concerning what you're going to do at the job in this situation. You need to hear the voice of God to what you do at this cross in your life. And if you're not doing and hearing and obeying what you do know of God, then you're hurting yourself and becoming desensitized to saying, God, what do you want me to do? I'm trying to do what you want me to do, but I'm just not hearing yet. God says you're desensitized to hearing me. It's not that I'm not speaking. You're just not in tune to it because you're not doing and obeying what I've already told you to do. And so the more one ignores the the voice of God, the duller that becomes or the hearing becomes. Number three, you've got to refocus your focus upon God. We're talking about how to hear the voice of God. You've got to refocus your focus upon God. We're often more concerned about what God wants me to do while God's more concerned about us understanding who he is. God, what do you want me to do now? And God says, why are you always worried about the next, what do you want me to do? God says, I'm much more concerned about you knowing who I am. Because if you know who I am, you would know what I want you to do. As a child that spends time with a parent, the more you get to know who your parent is, the more you know what you need to do in any given situation. Because you know the who of who's influenced your life. Not the do this, what, and do that, what, and do this, what. And do that, what? But you're learning by who you are. And God says, I understand you want to know what's the next step for my my life. And God says, why don't you become more concerned about learning who I am instead of learning what I would have you do for the next step? Because in knowing me, you'll know what's next. Uh, While he might tell us what to do, God is far more often telling us who he is. That's why we don't hear the voice of God. Because we're listening for God to tell me what to do. And God's trying to tell me who he is. I just don't hear God. God's trying to tell you who he is. And if you become more in tune to hearing who he is, you'd be very much aware of knowing what you are to do in the next steps of your life. If God is continually revealing the who, and we're continually looking for the what, it's no wonder that we're missing out on God's communication. Because God's more concerned about us hearing about who he is than about what he can do. Very important point. The Bible says, delight thyself also in what the Lord can do. No, delight thyself, Psalm 34, in the Lord. And he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. He'll give you the what after you get to know the who. He'll give you the desires of your heart. That's what you want But God says, I want you to want to know me. Delight yourself, what? In the Lord. The verse often is misinterpreted to mean that God will give you whatever you want. But it doesn't mean that at all. Uh, It means that when you are seeking the Lord first, he'll put his wants and his desires in your hearts so you'll now know what to ask for because you now know what he wants. You'll know what to desire because you now know what he desires. And so you'll help you know how to pray. I just don't know how to pray. The reason you don't know how to pray is you're saying, God, how do you want me to pray? And God says, why don't you learn to know who I am? Listen to the voice of God concerning who God is. Because if you delight in God, you'll know God's desires. You'll know what God wants. You'll know what God's direction is. And you'll know what the next step is. But you're so worried about what am I supposed to do? And God says, how about who am I supposed to better know? And in the better knowing of the who, we're able to know what the next what was. Whenever we start seeking to hear from God and who he is, we will begin to hear from him more often. Delight thyself in the Lord. He'll make his desires to become our desires. You see, the Lord changes our want to. I'm convinced that our gracious Heavenly Father speaks to every one of his children constantly, continually, giving us information to guide us and to direct us. But most people are, 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 are begging God to speak to them when it's our hearing that needs to be adjusted. It's our hearing. It's God saying, God, I'm listening. What do you want me to do now? Now what do you want me to do? Now, God, what do you want me to do? And he may on occasion tell you what to do. But God wants you to listen concerning who he is. Listen to who I am. Learn about who he is. And when you get to know and hear the voice of God concerning who he is, You'll know what he wants because you've spent so much time knowing him. You know how his heart beats. You know what his dreams are. You know what his goals and ambitions are because you know him in your life. 
1 Chronicles 16, 11, seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face continually. Uh, it doesn't say what he can do for you. It says seek the Lord. Seek him. Seek him. Next one, number, whatever, next number, four or five, whatever we're on. Next one, how do we hear from God? Here's the next one. You've got to have a clean heart. You've got to have a clean heart. The Bible says in Psalm 66, verse 18, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Now, if God will not hear me because of unconfessed sin, how can I ever expect to hear from God? God says, I don't hear your prayers when you've got unconfessed sins, so obviously I'm not going to be able to hear from God if I've got unconfessed sin in my heart. So I've got to have a clean heart if I'm going to hear the voice of God. When we do not deal with sin God's way, we continue to be out of fellowship and out of range of clear communication of God's voice. God didn't leave. We left. We've not dealt with our sin. Does God know we're sinners? Absolutely. Does God know we're going to sin every day? Certainly. That's why he's given us his way to find forgiveness. Confess your sins, you know, and if we confess our sins, he's faithful, he's just, forgive us, cleanse us, praise the Lord. That's God's way. And that what does what? That restores the, the ability for us to once again hear from God and for God to hear from us. But God says, I want you to want to hear uh, from me more than you want to hear uh, on the other end. And God said, I want you to hear the voice of God. When we confess our sins with a repentant and a humble heart, God forgives, He cleanses, and He restores the person to once again be able to hear the voice of God. So as long as I have an unclean heart, any uh, sin in my life that I know has not been dealt with biblically or properly and confess it, does that mean I'm not, that I'm sinless? No. But I'm talking about uh, you're working on some things. And you're trying to get victory in some things. And you're trying to move forward in some things. And you're not excusing it, justifying it, ignoring it, acting like it's not that big a deal. You're confessing it. Why? I've got to hear the voice of God. If that doesn't motivate any of us to get right with God and get our heart right with God, it's so that we as a father, as a husband, as a leader, as a wife, as a mother, we've got to hear from God. And I will not allow unconfessed sin cause me to not hear from God because my life and the decision of life are so important. I've got to hear from God because I'm but a little child. I'm but a little child. I've got to hear from God. I don't know what to do. God, would you please give me an understanding heart? Well, what's that? That's a hearing heart that knows how to hear the voice of God. Next one. Have a clean heart. And the next one, have a yielded and surrendered will. Have a yielded and surrendered will. Jesus calls each of his followers to deny himself. That's to say no to self, no to self-will, no to self-agendas. He made it clear that each one of us must take up our cross daily, taking self and self-agendas to the place of execution, then follow me, follow what I say, the way I want you to live, the way I want you to act, the way I want you to speak. I can only follow rightly if I'm hearing rightly. And God says you got to have a surrendered will. you got to have a will that's nailed to the cross and crucified with Christ. Deny yourself. Take up your cross so you can follow. But I won't follow right if I can't hear right. If I don't have a surrendered heart and a will that's willing to surrender and submit to God, then God says, you don't want to hear my voice because you're already in a defiant, resistant position to where even when I say it, you're not going to do it anyway. You're going to make an excuse. You're going to justify it. You're going to poo-poo and act like it's not that big of a deal. Oh, it's not that big of a deal. And you're going to hold your ground. So why should I even voice my uh, direction for your life? Because you're not going to want to hear it, even if I tell you that. And so God says, I want you to be surrendered. I want you to be yielded uh, and follow me. The ability to hear God is matured. In other words, as we grow to spiritual maturity, we become more sensitive to hearing the voice of God. Now, it's a maturing process. A little baby, as they grow, they, they don't hear well. I mean, they, they may hear noises and things, but they begin to hear as they mature and as they begin to grow. Begin to hear mom and dad, they begin to hear the concern of a parent. They begin to hear uh, the, the love of a parent. They hear that uh, in, their, in their hearing. So as we mature and uh, surrender ourselves and yield ourselves, and not my will, but thy will be done. My agenda set aside. My desire set aside. My dream set aside. God, I surrender. What is it that you want me to do? God, I'm listening for how 
you would have me to go, the direction you'd have me to live, the, the, the next step that you'd have me to take. And uh, God says, I want you to be surrendered. Deny yourself. Take up your cross. Next one. Next one. Pay attention. Pay attention. How many times you talk to someone, your kids, our kids, and whatever else, and say, hey, pay attention. Focus. Focus. And uh, what are we saying? Your, your, your mind's everywhere. You're distracted. Just zero in. Focus on me. And so how do we hear from God? Pay attention. Too many of us miss the voice of God because we're just simply not paying attention. We're just going about life. And that's probably the most, or the, the most common reason, uh, barrier to hearing the voice of God is that we're just not paying attention. Uh, people tune out the voice of God by constantly chasing stimulation, focusing on their own issues, refusing to actually set their minds on things which are above, and so they're just not paying attention because they're focused on this next uh, burden. They're focused on this, what's the next thing they're going to do, and taking this soccer game, and over here, and running there, and running there, and they're not listening. They're not paying attention. So God says, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking, but you're not hearing the voice of God. How come? You're just not paying attention. You're not paying attention. Let me give you the next one. Get near to God. Get near to God. If I want to listen to God, i gotta, I got to draw close to God. James 4, 8 says, draw nigh to God. He'll draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. You see, to draw near to God, I need to be open and ready to be obedient to his will. I need to be near in order to hear. I need to be near in order to hear. How many of us miss things, and sometimes we don't hear something, we lean in a little bit closer, and what, 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 what'd you say? And we, we draw a, near, a little bit near because we're not hearing from where we're standing, so we draw near to be able to hear. And so if we want to get to hear God, you've got to draw near to God. Draw nigh to me, the Bible says, and I'll draw nigh uh, to you. You see, getting close to God, uh, getting close to the Lord helps me to hear the voice of God. Uh, sometimes you'll never hear the voice of God until you draw near. Sometimes God can get your attention from a long ways off. A parent, a mom sometimes can yell across the yard, or across the street, or across the city, and you've got the, their attention, right? But sometimes you're not going to hear, you're going to miss it unless you're drawing near to God and you're hearing the voice of God. Let me give you the next one. Let me hurry up. we got just a few moments here. Next one, be quiet and quit talking so much. Be quiet. You want to hear the voice of God? Be quiet. Quit yapping so much. Quit talking so much. Here's a great verse. I love this verse. Uh, go to Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and uh, verse, verse number 1. It's amazing to me. It's amazing to me how much God instructs us concerning how to hear the voice of God. You know why? Because the most important thing we need as a Christian is we've got to be able to discern God's voice from all other voices. we got to be able to hear it. If not, we're going to end up in a lot of wrong directions, messing up our lives, and looking back saying, where in the world did I go wrong? I'll tell you where you went wrong every time. You didn't hear the voice of God. You maybe thought it was a voice of God. Well, I was sincere. I thought that's what God was saying. Yeah, but you didn't know the voice of God. And sincerity still can mess up a person's life and end with heartache and wreck uh, and ruin. And so we got to just be quiet and quit talking so much. you got to Ecclesiastes chapter 5. In verse 1, Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 1. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. Notice the proportion here is not equal. We're to listen much more than we're to talk. Notice what it says. Be more ready to hear. It doesn't say talk and hear. It's I want you to be more ready to hear. What's God saying? It's going to be much more beneficial to us if we are quiet and are not talking so much so that we can hear God. Um, it means then that we need to get quiet and listen for God more than we need to get God to listen to us. Uh, we shake our fists sometimes. God, now listen to me. This isn't right. This isn't fair. And we want God to listen to us. And God says, you need to listen to me much more than you need me to listen to you. But as long as you're talking all the time and you're not quiet, you can't hear. I'm not just talking about talking and noise out your mouth. Our minds can go a mile a minute. And we can spend a lot of time internalizing our self-talk uh, so much so 
that, uh, that we're not hearing the voice of God because there's just so much noise going on inside of us, uh, uh, all that self-talk that we don't hear. We're not quiet. We're, we're talking too much. Uh, you see, it's in this quiet state that God will share with us what he wants us to know and do. This is, a, this is a neat thought. Most of us spend more time talking to God in prayer than we spend listening to God in prayer. Now, yeah, this will be another point here in a moment, but um, if we would listen to God more in prayer, you would hear the voice of God and know what God would want you to pray for in the times that you are to talk in prayer. We have our prayer list. I'm not, I'm not against prayer lists. Go down your prayer list. But there needs to be a pause, a sila, a time in your prayer time with God where there's silence, where you're not talking, you're listening. So you can hear the voice of God and God says, what about asking for this? What about praying for this? If you've been praying sometimes, you just pause, and all of a sudden God placed someone on your heart. And you weren't even thinking of that person. And you, you know what you need to do? God's telling you who he wants you to pray for right then. Because you woke you up at nighttime sometimes, and uh, he wakes you up, and, and someone's on your mind. You know what God's doing? God's trying to hear the voice of God, and, and you're listening. He's telling you what? He's telling you to, well, how to pray at that moment. He's telling you the specifics of that prayer. And so when you want to hear from God, you've got to be quiet. You've got to be quiet. Let's read on. You're in Ecclesiastes still, chapter 5. Let's go to verse 2. So he said, I want you to be more ready to hear. Verse 2, be not rash with thy mouth. He says, you're, you're, you're rambling. You're just going off in your mouth. Let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. He says, you better be thinking about what you're talking about, not to be thinking out loud and, and hasty and just sort of just blundering out everything that's on your heart or what you're feeling. He says, don't, don't be hasty and utter everything before God. For God is in heaven and thou upon the earth. Therefore, what's he say? Let thy words be few. Boy, can you imagine how much better our relationships would probably be if we follow that guidance of let our words be few? For a dream cometh through the multitude of business. We saw that Wednesday night. And a fool's voice is known by what? The multitude of words. Let someone just talk and talk and talk. Pretty soon you realize what a fool they are. Because they'll say things and talk in ways that are like, you're talking like a fool. You were sounding pretty smart there when you had few words, but now you've talked so much you've revealed to everybody how, how foolish you are. It would have been better to just be quiet and everybody assumes you're smart and you've opened your mouth and everybody assumes how foolish you are because you've revealed it to everybody else. And so be not hasty in your words. If I'm always doing the talking, I won't be able to hear the voice of God. If I'm always talking to God, if you're always talking to someone, you're not going to hear what they're trying to say. You know, you've been in a conversation, you're trying to get a word in edgewise, and you even say it, but they don't hear it because they're so focused on talking, communicating to you. You're not hearing it. So if I'm always talking to God, I'm not able to hear the voice of God. When Elijah finally got quiet enough to listen, God was able to tell him what was really going on. He thought he was the only one. He thought... He was the only one serving God. He thought he was the one and only, but when he got quiet and still and quit talking, he heard God say, there's 7,000 of you that have been faithful. There's 7,000 of you that haven't bowed to Baal. There's 7,000. But he thought he was the only one because he was doing all the talking. And when he finally got quiet, he heard God's voice. And God says, Elijah, it's not just you. There's 7,000. What might God say to us if we just be quiet and listen? I wonder what we would hear from God. Maybe that's what we're fearful of, of what God would say and what we would hear. And that's why we say so many words, because we don't really want to hear what God wants to say. Let me give you this next one. Go to Exodus chapter 19. Exodus 19. I want to get through this tonight. I don't want to continue it next time. Go to Exodus chapter 19 and Genesis, Exodus. Next one, set an appointment. Set an appointment. If you want to hear from God, the voice of God, hear the voice of God, you've got to set an appointment. Uh, look what it says here in Exodus. Yeah, this is a neat, neat story. Uh, Exodus chapter 19, and uh, look at verses 10 and 11. And the Lord said unto Moses, I'll let you get there. Exodus chapter 19, verse 10. Got it? Okay, it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes, and be ready against the third day. For the third day the Lord will come down the side of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And then skip down to verse 19. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and God answered him, notice now, by a voice. God 
voice was heard by Moses and the people of God. But what did they have to do? Well, the Bible says here in verses 10 and 11, they had to prepare themselves and they had to be what? Be ready against the third day. The third day God was showing up. Third day God was showing up. So when I say, I said, you've got to send an appointment. What's that mean? God comes to a prepared atmosphere. God shows up at a prepared atmosphere. There's a lot of preparation that goes into a church service. If we were not prepared, then the voice of God would be very difficult to hear because God shows up at a prepared place. And so all the behind the scenes stuff that takes place that seems so insignificant, unimportant, but we show up and things are prepared. It's a prepared environment. It's a third day. And on that third day in that prepared environment, God shows up and the voice of God is heard. If we're running around and scrambling and doing this and doing that and it's unprepared and all over the place, uh, we're not going to hear nearly as clearly the voice of God as we are. An appointment involves two things, a time and a place. What time do you schedule to hear from God? And where do you schedule that time to hear from God? Now, don't get mad because you don't hear from God if you don't set an appointment to hear from God. He says on the third day, be ready, I'm showing up. Be prepared, I'm showing up. And sure enough, he shows up and they heard the voice of God to know what to do in the next steps of their life. But if they weren't prepared, they wouldn't have heard. And so God says an appointment is a time and a place. And so when you need to hear from God, where, where is that? When is that time? What time is set aside for us to hear from God? And where do you go? Where's the place you go? Your house is busy. The kids are here. This, that, there. Is it up early in the morning? Early in the bedroom? The, uh, the, the, the you know, living room? Is that in the backyard? Is it getting your car going? Where do you go to hear the voice of God? There's need to be an appointment, a time, and a place. You see, our lives are much too important, and there's too many people depending upon us to be able to not hear the voice of God. We've got to hear the voice of God. Let me give you the next one. Spend time in God's Word. Spend time in God's Word. Now, I don't deny, I don't deny that God can speak to us through our circumstances. But I just can never be certain of those circumstances. I can only be certain of God's Word. God can speak through situations and circumstances, but I always must perceive them with some skepticism because circumstances are just that. They, they come and go. And if I base everything on a circumstance, I may be steered the wrong way in a lot of different ways. Only thing sure in our lives is the sure word of God. That's it. It's stable. It's certain. It's, it's established. And, and so many Christians don't like to hear it, but there's a simple way to hear God speak more often. Make it a discipline to read God's Word daily, study it, attend a good Bible preaching church where you'll hear the Bible taught and proclaimed so you'll hear from the voice of God. So you'll hear the voice of God through the Word of God and know what God says. This includes a daily quiet time in the Bible uh, as uh, we walk uh, with God, uh, staying tuned in to God's voice. God's message always lines up with God's Word and God's character. God's message, a voice that you hear, will always line up with His Word, and it will always line up with His character. If it ever violates His Word or who He is, His character, then it is not the voice of God. That's why the most important thing you need to know is God says, I want you to know who I am. Hear who I am, not hear what I can do for you. Uh, let me hurry. We're, we're running out of time. The Word of God, the Bible says, is a plumb line. You know what that is, Brother Pacheco? A plumb line. And uh, that's a, an old-time uh, level. Uh, and uh, we see that in Amos chapter 7. He says, a plumb line, saith the Lord, behold, I'll set a plumb line in the midst of the people of Israel. And, and what was that plumb line? It was a weighted string. You'll see a string, and sometimes it has, has, has a little pointed thing on it, heavy weight on it. And uh, uh, gravity will let that thing drop. And as it, once it stops swinging a little bit, it'll give you a perfect level line every time. And God says, the plumb line of our lives is the Word of God. He says, is this lining up to what you're hearing, what God wants you to do? I don't know. Let's take the plumb line of God's Word and see if it lines up. Well, it seems like it's a little bit off kilter. Uh, well, let's adjust the plumb line. No, we don't adjust the plumb line. We adjust whatever's out of kilter to get in tune with what the plumb line says. 
And it's like, and I know we all fudge on the on the you're trying to put your fence up and close enough, trying to build a wall out here, put the level on there, close enough, the bubble there. Uh, but God said, listen, it's not about being close enough and being a child of God and hearing the voice of God. It's not the best three out of five I heard from God. You gotta get this thing right because it's your life, your future, your family, your decisions. You better get it right, and you better know how to hear the voice of God. And God speaks, but we just don't know how to hear his voice. And we're allowing all these voices to confuse us. Spend time, next one, with God in prayer. With God in prayer. Call, Jeremiah 33, 3, call upon me. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Praying includes speaking to God. I understand that. But also includes listening to God. God, get to know God's still, small voice, like Elijah did in 1 Kings 19, 12. After the earthquake, after the fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, wasn't in the earthquake. Where was the Lord? He was in that still, small voice. Still, small voice. Spend time alone with God in prayer. The disciples returned from their brief missionary journey. The Bible says in Mark 6.30, they gathered themselves together with Jesus and told them all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. The first thing Jesus says to them in verse 31 of Mark chapter 6, and he said to them, come ye yourself apart into a desert place and rest a while. Mark tells that they were so busy they didn't have time to eat. Verse 32 goes on to say, so they departed into a desert place by ship privately. I think the believer's quiet time with God should be framed by Scripture, but while the discipline involves reading, it also involves the discipline of listening to the voice of God. Listen, God makes His presence known in the gentle, delicate, quiet, alone places with Him. And if you don't have time to get apart into a desert place alone with God, then you're not going to be able to hear the voice of God as clearly as you'd like to hear. There's got to be, there can't be all that noise of all of life going on. Not that your life is out of control or that it's bad, but it's just noisy. It's noisy life. And so we got to get alone. He says it's time to come apart to a desert place. So they, they set themselves apart and they went to a private place on that ship. They went away and uh, spent some time alone with God. Prayer is when we, this is a great point. I want to help you with this. I wish I had a whole message to preach on this. I mentioned a little bit this morning. Prayer, listen closely now. Prayer allows you to talk to God about what's on your heart. Prayer is what allows you to talk to God about what's on your heart. What's on your heart? It's what your burdens are. It's what's burdening you. We talked a whole message this morning, leave your burdens there. So prayer allows you to talk to God about what's on your heart, it allows you to give him your burden for the day. Why? Because it's very difficult to hear from God when you're burdened about something. You've got to give your burden to God during your prayer time so that you can hear from God and hear the voice of God. That's why Satan wants to keep us so bogged down with our burdens. Because you know, if you're burdened about something and reading your Bible, you're not getting much out of it because you're so worried about what's going on. I mean, I've been in, in um, uh, hospital rooms with my mom or others and trying to read my Bible or whatever, but I'm concerned, I'm burdened or uh, uh, worried or whatever else about what's going on or the test results coming back and I'm trying to focus on the Bible. And you know how it is, you're, you're burdened. And it's real hard to focus on the Word of God when you're burdened. And so you've got to cast your burden upon the Lord. Because when you give your burden to God, it allows you now to be able to hear the voice of God. But as long as I'm burdened down, I can't hear God. I can't hear God very good because I'm just so concerned and focused on a problem. And so prayer is when you give your burden to God. We saw our verse this morning in Psalm 55, 22. Cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. The psalmist doesn't say, share your burden with the Lord. It doesn't say, tell him about your problems. It says, give him, cast upon him, leave your problem with him. So often we pray to the Lord to tell him about our problems, but that's about as far as it goes. Perhaps we share with him what's bothering us, but we don't trust him enough to put what's bothering us in his hands. In other words, we take our burdens to the Lord, but we don't leave them there. We share all of our hurts and heartaches with God, but we don't give our heartaches and hurts to God. And in, and, in and in failing to do that, we then clog up our ability to hear the voice of God. Why? Because I'm just burdened. I'm so sad. 
I'm so uh, hurt. And that burden just keeps me from hearing the voice of God. And then I'm going to say lastly, I'm done. There's probably a lot more that we could cover. These are ones I got the last couple of weeks when I was preparing this. Take your Bibles and go to Acts chapter 13. This is the last point. We'll, we'll be done. I appreciate your attending this for the, the length of this message tonight. Acts chapter 13, in verse number 2 and verse number 3. Acts chapter 13, verse number 2 and 3. The Bible says, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, the Holy Ghost said, so they had to hear something that was said, separate me Barnabas and Paul for the work wherein I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. God says, I, I want you to separate Paul and Barnabas and I want you to send them out. As missionaries. And the Bible says they laid hands on them and sent them out. What's that mean? They heard the voice of God. They heard what God said. And so they did what God said. But what's the key ingredient there? Uh, they had what? If you want to hear from God, you've got to set aside time for fasting with prayer. You've got to set aside time for fasting with prayer. See what the verse says twice? And it says that they ministered in the Lord and fasted. And fasted. And then what? The Holy Ghost said. They heard from God when they fasted. Fasting is not a magic pill or a magic wand or whatever else. It's a deliberate step of removing distractions and intensifying your concentration in order to hear the voice of God. That's all it is. That's all fasting is. It's to take away the distractions so you can be more concentrated or focused. Most often, fasting is food, obviously, break fast. The purpose of break fast is you're breaking the fast of all night, of having not eaten. And so it's a fast primarily for food, but substituting that time for extra time with God, it could consist of fasting from anything that could distract you from hearing God. It could be our phones. They could prevent us from hearing God. It can be our TV that's distracting us from hearing from God. It could be our computers that's co distracting us from hearing from God. And so fasting is nothing more than setting aside anything that might distract us from hearing God's voice. So that I can more concentrate on what the voice of God is telling me. To do. And so the key factor is concentration on the Lord, on His Word, and on His will, so that you can hear from Him. I don't know what we might need to fast from that's a distraction to you. It consumes your time, and it's causing your hearing. You have ears to hear, but you're not hearing. You have eyes to see, but you're not seeing. God says, I want to guide your life. I want to direct you. I want to help you at these crossroads of your life. I want to give you instruction at these different areas of your life. He says, but as much as I'm trying to help you, you're not hearing it. You're not hearing it. And so tonight, I don't know how many we jotted down, 10, 12, whatever it might be, a little bit less maybe. But these are just a few ways that God, I want you to examine your heart. And say, God, are some of these areas maybe preventing me from hearing your voice? If so, how much do, you, do we want to hear the voice of God? How important are the decisions and the crossroads and the leadership opportunities and, and responsibilities that are before us? How important are those to hear? God, I am but a little child. Solomon, young 20s, prime of his life. David, his father, and on the throne. He said, I'm just a little kid. God, I need help. I've never done this before. God, would you give me an understanding heart, a hearing heart that hears the voice of God? That's all I want. I just want to know your voice. And I know if I'm musing and following your voice, I'll never go wrong. But if I'm not hearing rightly, then I won't be going in the right direction. And it won't be a matter, it'll only be a matter of time before. I'll look at my life with regret 
and disappointment and wasted years and opportunities. And say, how did I get here? The same way all of us have gotten there. I did not hear the voice of God. I didn't know the voice. I didn't know the voice. Heavenly Father, tonight, Lord, I love these people. Not as much as you love them, but Lord, I love them. And I want you to love them through me. But Lord, the most important thing that we need to understand that we need to grow in is we need to know how to hear the voice of God. Not some audible voice. We're not talking about the way we interact with each other. We're talking about to know the voice of God, to hear the voice of God. Because life is too fragile. Life is too brief. We must know the voice of God. Father, help us to see the urgency of the hour and the importance of doing some serious soul searching in each of our lives as we wind down this year and say, God, I want to be, I'm a little child, I'm a little child. And I just want you to give me a hearing heart, a hearing ear. I just want to be able to hear the voice of God. If that's the only prayer request and goal and dream you have for this upcoming year, that'll be the best request you could ask for is the best one that Solomon could ask for and look at all that he got. As a result of asking for God, would you just give me a hearing heart? I just want to hear the voice of God. That's all I want. I don't want to mess up. I don't want to hear the wrong voices. Because my voice can be pretty persuasive sometimes, but I want my voice to overpower your voice. Lord, bless tonight this invitation. Our heads are bowed. Let's all stand this evening.